What is my usual way of teaching where I bombard you with tons of information sitting at my YouTube studio? दुनिया में सब कुछ बदल रहा है तो क्यों ना टीचिंग मेथडोलॉजी को भी थोड़ा बदला जाए लेट्स ब्रेक द मोनोटनी एंड लेट्स इंश्योर दैट वी मेक लर्निंग मोर फन एंड इंटरेक्टिव सो योर आई एम इन दिस ब्यूटिफुल सिटी ऑफ लंडन व्हिच इज अनडाउटेडली नोन एज द बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड आई वेलकम यू टू द फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ दिस ब्रांड न्यू सीरीज वेयर आई एम गोइंग टू टेक यू अराउंड द ग्लोब एंड विल हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड लिटरेचर इन मोर प्रैक्टिकल एंड एंगेजिंग वे The moment I stepped in this beautiful city of London, the first place that I wanted to so visit was the famous Baker Street, closely associated to world's famous fictional character and my personal favorite, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. In today's video, I am going to take you to the Baker Street, located at the heart of the city of London, that is in the area called Malibun. And as we walk towards the famous Sherlock Holmes Museum at 221B Baker Street I'm going to also share with you some crazy and very interesting facts about the world famous detective Mr Sherlock Holmes so let's go so if you ever get this opportunity to come down to this beautiful city of London make sure you come to the Baker Street station where you will find these beautiful tiles and on these tiles you will find the famous uh, portrait of Sherlock Holmes with the deer stalker hat and a pipe सो लंडन की एक खास बात यह है कि लंडन के अंडरग्राउंड ट्यूब्स जो हैं जैसे कि जो बेकर स्ट्रीट स्टेशन से मैं बाहर आ रही हूँ ये सारे ट्यूब्स आपको दिल्ली बॉम्बे की मेट्रो की याद जरूर दिलाएंगे राइट आउटसाइड द बेकर स्ट्रीट स्टेशन यू विल फाइंड द आइकॉनिक स्टैचू ऑफ शालक होम्स स्मोकिंग हिज पाइप अलॉन्ग द वॉल्स ऑफ द कॉर्नर For those of you who are new to literature, let me tell you that Sherlock Holmes was the brain child of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. काफ़ी लोगों को ऐसा लगता है कि शर्लक होम्स एक रियल डिटेक्टिव था जो विक्टोरियन इंग्लैंड में रहा करता था बट ना 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 शर्लक होम्स वॉज अ प्योरली फिक्शनल कैरेक्टर क्रिएटेड बाय सर अर्थर कॉनल डॉयल एंड हैंड्स डाउन इवन टुडे ही इज द मोस्ट फेमस एंड द मोस्ट फेवरेट फिक्शनल डिटेक्टिव फिगर ऑल अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड According to all these stories Sherlock Holmes and his sidekick Dr Watson lived at 221B Baker Street from 1881 to 1904 and since then it has become one of the most famous addresses across the world I'm right at the Baker Street and here I am sharing one very interesting trivia about the famous detective so Sherlock has been featured in more films and TV shows than any other character across the fictional world of English literature most interestingly what you must be knowing is that he's the only fictional character to have a house of his own and we are going to head towards the Sherlock Holmes museum which is built right at the heart of the city of London at the 221B Baker Street due to the vivid descriptions given by Dr Watson about Sherlock Holmes be it his very small peculiar habits like occasionally taking cocaine or be it um, his you know very meticulously dressing himself being very cautious about his appearance but not so cautious but rather i would say chaotic about his paperwork is what makes us very hard to forget that sherlock holmes was not a person in flesh and blood who walked down the street of baker street in a victorian england rather he was a purely fictional character so as we are heading towards the famous sherlock holmes museum we are going to pass by some very famous food outlets and food joints like taco bell dunkin donuts and the famous subway So let's go. So as a celebration of Mr Holmes there's a museum that is situated right at 221B Baker Street where they have created the entire setup of how theoretically the character of Sherlock Holmes lived and worked. This museum was set up in the year 1990 and was set up by the International Society of Sherlock Holmes or the Sherlock Holmes International Society as they say. What is interesting about this museum is that this address 221B Baker Street is actually set up between 239 and 241. So ideally if you see the house number is not in the sequence. And why is that so? Because a lot of letters, more than 1000 letters come to Sherlock Holmes address 221B Baker Street every week. 
where people from across the world are writing to Mr. Holmes to solve mysteries of their life. And there was a long dispute that was happening that where should all these letters be delivered? So they decided that let's make a home of Sherlock Holmes. That is 221 Baker Street. All these letters are beautifully compiled together in a form of a book and is kept there in Mrs. Hudson's room. The museum is situated at a four-storey townhouse building at the legendary address of 221B Baker Street. And what is very phenomenal about this address is that the museum, the interior walls of the museum, is set up exactly to look how it was described in all the Sherlock Holmes works. Right outside the wall of the Sherlock Holmes Museum, you will find a blue plague saying that this is where the consultant detective Mr. Sherlock Holmes lived from 1881 to 1904. On arrival of the museum, you will find a gift shop that takes the entire ground floor. It's a beautiful, well-stocked gift shop, which will be an ideal place for you to grab some souvenirs for all the Sherlock Holmes fan that you have in your life. So before we enter into the museum, let us quickly grab a ticket and then let's enter the famous Sherlock Holmes Museum at 221B Baker Street. the Sherlock Holmes Museum, you will be greeted by Mrs. Hudson, who is not just the landlady, but who is also the housekeeper. She was the one who used to bring clients all the way up to Sherlock Holmes study. Next, when we enter inside the museum, you are going to find a staircase that leads from the hall to the first floor, which is the Sherlock study. Now, that staircase contains 17 steps. Why am I focusing so much on the 17 steps? Because there was a conversation or a dialogue or exchange that happened between Watson and Sherlock Holmes in the scandal of Bohemia, where Sherlock Holmes says that you see but you do not observe. And he gives an example telling Watson that Tum roj hall se bedroom takate ho, study takate ho. But have you ever noticed how many steps do you climb to reach the study? And Watson doesn't remember. And that is when Sherlock Holmes says that you see but you do not observe and Sherlock Holmes distinctly mentions there that there were 17 steps that you have to take in order to reach the study from the hall. On the first floor you will find Sherlock's famous study which overlooks Baker Street. Right outside the study you will find the statue of Billy Boy or the Bell Boy who used to get letters to Holmes. The room is furnished as it would have looked in the Victorian London with a sturdy wooden desk, brocade armchairs, large fireplace and formal dining table. For me, the study represents an iconic space. It is a place where Sherlock Holmes met most of his clients and where all his adventures with Watson began. As you take a panoramic view of the study, you will find two chairs placed near the fireside, one on which Sherlock Holmes sat and the one which overlooked the window where Holmes' client sat. Now you might ask that why is the chair that was placed right opposite to Sherlock Holmes was placed in that particular setting? It was because when the sunlight hits the client from the window and will illuminate his face, Sherlock Holmes will be able to observe all the minute details and will be able to assess his character even better. So after you look at the two chairs, you will find that there is a, a large array of drinks placed very near to the chair on which the client would sat. Why are these drinks there? Because Mrs. Hudson, once the client gets comfortable, would offer uh, him or her drinks and by the choice of the drink, Sherlock Holmes will be able to tell so much about the character of the client. Right next to the Sherlock Holmes chair, you will find that his desk is placed. Now this is a very, very special desk because this is the desk where he did so many scientific experiments. And do you know this fact, this really interesting fact that Sherlock Holmes was the one who pioneered the fingerprint analysis technique. So it was in the work sign of four that Sherlock Holmes first introduced the fingerprint analysis technique in the year 1890. 
On the other hand, if you look at the Scotland Yard or the FBI of London, basically the Metropolitan Police Centre headquarters, they were able to come up with a fingerprint analysis technique not before 1901. That means 11 years after it was first introduced by Sir Arthur Conal Doyle in his work Sinophone. Sherlock Holmes wasn't just a man of science, he was also a creative musical soul. Sherlock used to play violin when he found a particular case difficult or if he found his life particularly boring when no new cases were at his disposal. He believed that violin helped to calm him down mentally and physically. His famous violin, which is placed very beautifully in his study, is the one that he got from the Tottenham Court Road for about one-fourth million dollars in today's rate. Sherlock Holmes had a restless mind and he used to get bored really easily. It was one of these boring days when he was playing with his revolver that he shot two important letters on the opposite side of the wall. And those letters were we are, referring to Queen Victoria. Placed in a study is a very important picture. Picture of Sherlock Holmes' lover, Irene Idler. She was an opera singer and very close to Sherlock Holmes. She was, of course, I would say, one of the few people who outshined and outperformed Sherlock Holmes. And that is the reason he, she was so close to Sherlock Holmes' heart. But Sherlock Holmes never called her by her own name. He used to always refer to Irene Adler as that woman or the woman. On the left side of the study, you will find the desk of Dr. Watson, Sherlock Holmes' dear friend, confidant and sidekick. And on the desk, you will also find a very beautiful medical bag, the bag that he used throughout his life. On the desk, you also find copy of a newspaper, Times newspaper, from the year 1881. Now, this year 1881 is very, very important because of two reasons. Number one, this was the year when Sherlock Holmes for the first time met Dr. Watson and they both moved uh, in together and started living at 221B Baker Street. And secondly, 1881 is the year when Dr. Watson came from Afghanistan where he was serving as a surgeon in a war and after coming from Afghanistan after you know uh, suffering from a few illness because of the war he came to London as a civilian and was looking for a house where he can live in central London and that is when uh, Dr. Watson met Sherlock Holmes in St. Bath Hospital and they decided to move in together and stay at the Baker Street. So this uh, writer, Sir Arthur Conal Doyle, started writing about Sherlock Holmes back then in the Victorian times. And the first work that was published by him was A Study in Scarlet, which was published in the year 1887. He has written four such novels and 56 short stories around the character of Sherlock Holmes. And do you know that when this first book was launched. It took London by storm. People were amazed to know about this character filled with cold logic, forensic observations and meticulous details and the most famous format of the detective novel. After critically examining Sherlock Holmes' study, we now move on to the room next to the study, that is Sherlock's bedroom. And in Sherlock's bedroom, you find an array of pictures on a wall you might feel that these are pictures of his friends and family, just like we all love decorating our house with the pictures of our family and friends. But to your surprise, these are pictures not of the friends and family members of Sherlock Holmes. Rather, these are the pictures of some famous serial killers from across the world. And lovingly, Sherlock Holmes used to address them as my friends. Sherlock Holmes was a master of disguise. On the bed, you will find his makeup kit. When Holmes needed to catch a criminal, he used to go in disguise. He would disguise himself so wonderfully that when he came home in the evening, even Dr. Watson would not be able to identify him. Also kept on his bed is the priest hat that he used in Scandal of Bohemia case. Placed near his bed is a book of beekeeping. Not a lot of you know that Sherlock Holmes 
when he retired became a beekeeper he loved bees so much even uh, arthur conall doyle for that matter had a special interest in beekeeping and that is the reason why he always portrayed sherlock holmes having the same interest reading about books and also writing a very popular bee manual sherlock holmes as you must be knowing was addicted to tobacco and also to cocaine Dr Watson his friend and confidant was really infuriated with Sherlock Holmes because of this habit since Dr Watson was a physician and he was a man of health and hygiene and that is the reason why he never liked Sherlock Holmes for these two habits So after exploring the first floor of Sherlock Holmes museum we move on to the second floor where you're going to find two bedrooms bedroom of Mrs Hudson the landlady and the housekeeper and bedroom of Dr Watson In Watson's room you find medical instruments like stethoscope and collection of books related to medicine including the famous family physician Also there's a toilet right inside Watson's room which is surprisingly said to be a very posh thing to have in Victorian times. In Mrs Hudson's room there is a special book where tourists can write their names and countries and date they visited this museum fondly assuming that Mr Holmes might go through this diary some day. What stood out for me was a framed leaflet like poster titled Home Supporting Cast featured in both Japanese and English talking about all things related to Sherlock Holmes. This speaks a lot about the influence and popularity of Sherlock Holmes on a globe and how Holmes is loved across linguistic borders and cultures. Up on the third and the topmost floor of Sherlock Holmes Museum, you will find extremely lifelike waxwork models of some of the main characters in Sherlock Holmes stories. Also, you will find a wax sculpture of Dr. Watson busily writing notes down in his famous diary. सो so, इसी के साथ मैं और शालक होम्स दोनों ही लेते हैं आपसे अलविदा ये है लंदन का एक बहुत ही खूबसूरत सा पार्क विच इज़ नोन एज द रीजन्स पार्क एंड आई वुड लाइक टू टेल ऑल ऑफ यू आउट देयर दैट इफ यू लाइक द वीडियो इफ यू लाइक द न्यू टीचिंग मेथडोलॉजी देन प्लीज़ हिट द लाइक बटन ऑल्सो एट द सेम टाइम इफ यू वॉन्ट मी टू मेक मोर सच वीडियोज एक्सप्लोरिंग डिफरेंट लिटरी लैंडमार्क across the globe then please put that in the comment section below and also subscribe to the channel because i'm going to be coming up with a lot of travel vlogs about places like globe theater jane austen museum and what not so if you have any comments any questions put that in the comment section below i'll see you very soon in my next video lecture that's it from my side for this video lecture we'll meet you very soon in the next video lecture Till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com